I'm sad that I brought some bad luck to Hikaru no, for it's... not not being able to qualify because he was playing this game so well and reached a winning position, but uh, it slipped away. And yeah, sometimes, you know, sometimes it's easier to win from a losing position. Since your opponent sometimes attacks, they require material sacrifices. And when you sacrifice material, even when you understand that the position is winning, some precision is required. And when, since it's a rapid game, it's not enough time. So you, you tend to make mistakes. Uh, once in 2014, I think, Women's World Rapid Championship. We played 5-5-5 with 25 plus 10. That was cruel. But... Oh yeah, that's that, that's insane. Um... And the games just started, right? The games yes. of the last round, they just started? Yes, Ra we have a, a, a Rouser, or as more, more commonly known, we've been talking about this, the classical Sicilian. We've seen MVL play this to go away from his Nidorf. What is the theoretical status of this position? I will I will defer let to me, you. Let me check. So we're discussing the Hikaru's game, right? Yes, uh -huh. first and foremost. Actually, uh, I mean, I'm pretty familiar with these positions because uh, the only line that I played with Black uh, in the Sicilian, it was the Rouser. Mm -hmm. Well, I preferred other lines, not with Bishop d7, but with h6 on the eighth move. It's another story. Uh, Bishop d7, uh, uh, Firuji is playing a lot uh, mm. lately. F3 is like the more, it's the most solid way for white to uh, meet this uh, line of Rouser. Because if white wants to punish black immediately, they opt for the F4, like the more direct approach uh, on the knight's move. But F3 is like a solid way to uh, face this uh, continuation. And it's, uh, well, it's been. I think the evaluation of this um, line has not changed in the last I don't know, few years. It's better for white. It's like, you know, they're playing an improved Nijdorf. Yes. Uh, Black did, uh, um, did make some moves they prefer not to uh, make. I mean, or uh, some unnecessary moves. But otherwise, it's the same kind, the same kind of position with um, opposite uh, opposite uh, side uh, castling. Now, math before. mathematically speaking, the only people who can catch uh, mm -hmm. anybody who has seven point five is Dubov and Nepo. Mm -hmm. But as you said, yeah, there's two. Chances are. Well, I mean, well, someone with seven and a half would have to lose, basically. So Duda, for example, or I mean, if Duda for, uh, makes a draw against Anish mm -hmm. and uh, Jan or uh, Daniel uh, win their games, the tie breaks. What are the tie breaks? Do you know? Oh, it's it's so messy. I can I yeah. can check now. Um, so of the people in seven point five, so Duda has the most wins. He has four wins. Mm -hmm. Is he it the number one criteria? On the yeah, so first it's head to head. So right now in the 7.5, it's all equal. Their mm -hmm. tie break is completely equal between each other. Mm -hmm. um, but Duda has four wins, Hikaru with three. Rajabov has one win. So he says basically he needs to win. He yes, to win it would probably be Aron. ideal. Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. And this um, encounter against Aronian, I think they, it's always tricky, right? <laughs> Well, that's, you know, I, that's what I like to say, but a lot of the time people say like, oh, no, it's fake drama, you know, I'm like, I think they want to beat each other. I, do, I yeah, don't know. I'm, I think... I'm almost certain it's kind of, they take this game, like, like I think like, uh, as the most important game of the tournament for them. Maybe I... I feel it this way, but maybe I'm mistaken, but it seems so. I mean, yeah, that's what I thought. That's why the last final was very exciting. Also, mm -hmm. hi, Anna. Anna's back. Hello. <laughs> um, I was sneaky. I was sneaky, and I, I, I had to grab some food. I, I couldn't resist. Um, but now I'm back, and I would love to know what have I missed. Not much. We were discussing the tiebreaks criteria, oh, but yeah. 
for Nakamura, I mean, it's not for Kikaru, it's not that uh, important, right? He just... Or is it? I mean, if he makes a draw, is he in the top eight? Oh, it's very tricky. Uh, I mean, I guess that it all comes down to theoretical. I guess theoretically, Rajabov could win. And then... But then he would be tied with Aronian even if he drew, and Aronian would have eight. It's, it's, it's... Well, let me, let me ask you this question then. If you were in Hikaru's position and you were playing Shankland, who is obviously like strong, but is not currently competing for a qualification spot, you have white. Do you, what do you do? Do you just play the game? How much are you thinking about your strategy? How much risk I always to take? only play the game. For me, it's easier. <laughs> I, I mean, I, I don't know how to make draws. So for me, <laughs> just <laughs> I must play and focus on the game and don't think about the results. Try not to be distracted with the thoughts. Because... And um, uh, right now I'm watching their game. It seems to be as a very long theoretical line because they are playing very fast and um, it's already like move uh, 19, right? So it should they, they they know something they know something about this position for sure let me check um, on the games that have been previously uh, played because there are so many games being played online <laughs> nowadays mm -hmm. it's and uh, i wouldn't be surprised to, to find out that uh, this particular line had already happened a few months before Yes. Well, with a year of chess, like, you know, they, they never were putting Title Tuesday or Speed Chess Championship yeah. into the database. I don't have you noticed, like, the database. Yeah, I now noticed that's terrible because last year I have, I don't know, 700 games played. It's terrible. I, yeah. It's terrible. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I'm, I'm, I'm glad you're, you're mentioning it because uh, the same happened with, with uh, my friend Alex Ostrovsky. Like, we were playing in Title Tuesday, and sometimes. Yeah, I know. I checked on his games when preparing <laughs> for the match against him, and I found, uh, like, quite yeah. a few of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had some. some, Like, I don't play. I haven't played E4 over the board in five years, six years, but because I play it so much in, in online Blitz, I now suddenly my database is more E4 than others. So. It's yeah, I noticed. Good and, it's good and I bad. I needed to prepare for everything. For <laughs> D4, for E4, it's... against you. <laughs> yeah, I I haven't played like serious classical openings online for a while. So hopefully when I go back to cl classical chess, people are very confused. They're like, oh wow, he doesn't play those lines anymore. And then, mm -hmm. well, Alexander yeah. will know I just spoiled my plan. But everybody else maybe will not know. Um, it's a possibility for you to, um, you know to learn like a new opening that you don't plan to use in <laughs> yeah. uh, like over the board games yep that's uh, that's what uh, i actually did i was just about to ask i was just about to ask you know. <laughs> yeah i i started to play the karakan and actually it was black and in almost all of my games and the problem is that uh, I have such good results and I now know all the lines. <laughs> I start thinking about uh, actually playing it over the board. And that's where the problems start. Yeah, since you've... I have so many games with Karakan when playing Black. It's, it's crazy. Before the last year, I mean, just so people watching understand, like, we never had to worry about our online games making it to the database. It's just never something that was happening. Uh, but now it's very much the case. Someone goes to the openings database, they see Title Tuesday, Title Tuesday, Terrible. Title Tuesday. Now you need to think <laughs> about this Title Tuesday, whether you can play this opening or you shouldn't, or you'd better uh, keep it yep. to yourself. I mean, all the lines that you... So, yeah. And uh, you know what I found? I checked on the games that uh, have been played with this opening, this uh, same uh, line, uh, the Rouser variation. Mm -hmm. And I found two games of Hikaru's, one against uh, Daniel Dubov and the other one against Daniel Dubov <laughs> <Okay. laughs> in, in August 2020. And uh, they both reach uh, the same position to, um, after the 14th move. Uh, in one game, Hikaru played uh, knight to d4 
And the next game against Daniel, he opted for c4, the same way as he played uh, in this uh, game. And so the novelty in this game, uh, Nakamura Shankland, came only on the 15th move, where Black decided to take on c3, to take on Passant, mm -hmm. which seems to be quite logical, right? Black is opening up the b-file. Seems like it, yeah. Yeah. And so Black took on c3, Played rook to b8, and um, now we have this position. Does black have some serious attacking chances here, or is it kind of an illusion? Well, I mean, there's certainly hope <laughs> to get to the <laughs> white king one move. Uh, but now you see this d5. It's always a big question whether to push this d5 uh, or to push this pawn or not, because usually if white has a chance to close the center and to play e5, it's not really suggested for black in this uh, line, in this variation. And often when the queen is on c7, and well, not in this particular position, but in some other games, and black plays d5, there is still e5 possible, despite the fact, uh, well, the queen can take this pawn mm -hmm. on e5 because of bishop f4. But right now the queen is on b7, and after d5 white can just simply close the center, push the knight away from f6, and then start the attack. I really like that position for Hikaru, and I I wonder if if apart from e5, is he considering anything else? Because it seems so natural to go for that e5 mm -hmm. push. Indeed, I mean he he should be considering this knight e8, probably um, knight c7, right? Possibility it's that it's been played. Ah, it's been played. Good. Mm -hmm. So there you yeah there you go e5. Um, so I guess you can th technically. Can you take on b5 and also play knight d7? That's a big decision, though, to give away the bishop. Yeah. Then I mean, the knight, where, where does the knight, uh, where is the knight heading to? To b6, a4? Or? c4. At least, I guess, really the question in this game is, can Hikaru create sufficient winning chances from whatever position he gets? Because I... I don't know about Black's attack, but I can... Well, it's very dub uh, I mean, double-edged. It's not going to be a draw here. Yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. for sure. That's um, what... Mm -hmm. What is bishop to b4? Well, it's attacking the queen, so step one is complete. Now we have to <laughs> decide what to do. Mm. To move away your queen. Yes. <laughs> I guess <laughs> rook F2, takes... Yeah, I would I mean, say. Queen f2 looks very natural. The only thing you can play that doesn't move your queen is rook takes c8, but I don't really know why you would play rook takes c8. So probably queen f2, queen g3 or something, or queen f2, bishop a7. <laughs> wow, that's, uh, <laughs> Come yeah. Back. Who knows, I mean, but you, of course, in this position, you look towards uh, your opponent's king. I mean, yeah. your pieces, the bishops, two white bishops, d3, e3, they both, and kind of looking at the position of the black Yeah, and now the queen as well. That's why I think bishop b4 was su a surprising decision by Shanklin, because queen to g3 is also a very natural continuation here. I don't know if it's the best, but it certainly is helping that that queen is getting toward the king side too. Hmm. Bishop a7! <laughs> hey. Look, look! You know that what they say? It's important to look at it at one direction. <laughs> and certainly yeah. you and Hikaru do look um wow, nice guess. <laughs> I would never I would never look to this side of the board. It it moves like the you know, finding things like this gives me some hope, and then I remember very quickly how many points I've lost in classical, and uh, then I lose my hope. But you know, Never say never. I mean, I think Artur Sanz became a GM when he was 28 or 29, so I'm 25. Mm -hmm. True. I have time. Um, but yeah, I guess my logic was that on rook a8, you just go to d4, right? Or to c5, mm -hmm. and you've kind of improved your position a little bit, so. So, a uh, very positional approach. Okay, no bishop h6, <laughs> no brilliant sacrifices, <laughs> just improving your position, probably even exchanging the dark squared bishop to highlight 
those weaknesses on the oh, black no. squares. No, no, just... I don't ah, know. You know, I have another plan which can work for white one day. <laughs> it's, it's a very long plan though. King e1, bishop b1 and queen c2. Mm. Just okay. Theoretically, it might be possible. Okay, but it doesn't seem to be happening anytime soon. So. Now, of course, winning this game is huge because you just guarantee yourself the top eight and there's no questions and you don't need to worry about any of the other games. So that's, of course, that would be a huge result. Um, and uh, wh what is good about this result? Yeah, that it's totally up to Hikaru. Yeah, we're getting a question in our chat if Anna feels <laughs> left out because she doesn't have glasses. Anna, do you have any fake glasses? I think I have some Harry Potter uh, <laughs> outfit uh, fake glasses that don't even have anything in it, but I can bring them. I can bring them. Give me a second. I may I may know where I put them. Ah, One moment. It's going to be fun. Okay. Yeah, it's going to be <laughs> glasses only. Glasses only stream. Oh, it's uh... Yeah, I like how she said she said Harry Potter, but uh, I, I'm supposed I'm supposed to be the the Harry Potter look-alike circle glass. I've been thinking to get circle glasses, so gla like glasses like like you have. Um, I have another pair, but they got scratched sadly. Mm. Um, let me add. I've been adding names. That was my la latest project here to get names on the screen. If it fits. Does it fit? Oh wait, now there's two. Okay. But we do. I mean, suddenly after bishop uh, to a7, the game went to an end game. Or yeah, the rooks very got close traded. to an end game, right? Uh, the queens are still on the board, but they can get traded uh, very soon after queen to c2 if white wishes to. Although after this uh, rooks exchange. Uh, Actually, my plan was putting the queen and bishop battery on the b1 h7 diagonal starts to mm. look very probable. I mean, queen to d4, bishop to c2, queen to d3. It's going to be very hard to protect this h7 square because the pawn on e5 is guarding the f6 square. And it's not so clear how to... Okay, maybe there, there are not so many threats after this battery um appears on the board but but black needs to keep that in mind and white has another very um, pleasant uh, plan with just pushing uh, the pawns on the king side g4 f4 g5 it also yep. does seem to be quite uh, scary for black so an end game with some attacking prospects and then if you if the queens were traded here if like hypothetically the queens just mm -hmm. vanished and you had the two bishops and the and i still the like the uh wise position a yeah. lot because they have this pawns advantage at, on the uh queen side mm -hmm. so uh the plan for example was putting the bishop to c3 exchanging this dark squared bishop and then uh, creating a passed pawn on the A-file, B4, and then just pushing it forward. I mean, those end, uh, end games can be very unpleasant, very tricky. Ah. <laughs> I haven't found my Harry Potter glasses, but I have found my hippie glasses. <laughs> yes, <laughs> it's Amazing. not really... <laughs> um, I can't see too well, but I'm going to try. <laughs> right. Well, you don't have to... I mean, if yeah, it's you don't if need it... to suffer. No, it's not so too much. bad. It's not too bad. But I had some really good, uh, a really good one that I bought as a Harry Harry Potter cosplay. I don't know what where did I put them. Those were the real ones. I mean, real fake ones. Yeah, I, uh, I, I I'm sorry. We did not mean to peer pressure you. <laughs> No, uh, I, I, I started feeling left out. Everyone in the chat was saying that too. And I know I have them somewhere. That's why I feel bad. I should have been prepared for this. I'm unprofessional. I, oh, yeah, this is a very professional <laughs> no, it's just stream. I, I came. Yes, I came. I stepped in with those funny looking glasses. And Hikaru does push the pawns forward. He does push them forward. G4, F4, G5. 
Very powerful. Very powerful play on the king side. The time situation. Oh, the time situation is quite balanced, so they have. Yeah, uh... it's great. The time, no, no problems. Queen c six. Queen to c six. Well, preparing, preparing knight c seven because uh, with the queen on c eight, knight c seven didn't seem to be possible because of bishop c five check. Mm -hmm. Or at least it looked very um, dubious. Well, now queen c6, bishop to b6, again refraining the knight on e8, restraining it. Doesn't let it go to c7. It looks like one of these positions white can play forever. Seems yeah. Which is good news because Pekaru can try forever, and uh, even though he can't really see the rest of the results, that this is a Alexander. What do you think about this situation with online chess? Because from what we heard um, in the previous tour as well, in the last round, there were games where you you would have needed to know how are the other players doing for the tie breaks. If you need to win, or is the draw enough already for qualifying? But you can't just stand up and look around as at an over the board tournament. You cannot really see the other games. Are they allowed to look at the other games? Because when we were playing the online Olympiad, for example, right? And it was a team team's event, and it's very important to know how how your game, I mean, how your teammates uh, are doing. We were allowed to watch uh, their games. I mean, we were allowed to open their games and to 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 look at them. Mm. And uh, I mean, that helps sometimes to. Uh, choose uh, what uh, way to go, what strategy to pick. Uh, so I wonder whether these players are allowed to watch uh, their, um, um, I mean, the games of the tournament that are going on. So Probably far the case no. has been that they aren't. So it ah, would they take aren't, a, so. no. There was no ways of of seeing it. They only have the browser for for the game open. Yeah, browser, but you can else. have two tabs. Two taps uh, open. They don't let them have anything well, else then. open. So yeah. maybe for then the future, because it would it's an important piece of information when you are tied with other players and if someone lost in another game and maybe you yeah. don't need to play for a win any longer. Well, the rules are the rules. I mean, you need to play according to the rules and uh, it's the same for every player. So if they are not allowed, they're not allowed. Maybe it's easier in some ways. They just focus on their games. They don't want to lose, right? And um, okay, they will not be taking additional risk, I think. Um, but well, I'm watching also right now the games of the other players who may catch up uh, Hikaru if he makes a draw, for example. Rajabov and Daronian drew, by the way. Ah, so maybe. I mean they yeah. just play 37 moves so we can mark that down on the scoreboard that means that mm -hmm. Rajabov moves up to eight mm -hmm. Ranyan has eight and a half and well how does Hikaru win this position what is next for him f4 there are several plans I mean one is to push the pawns forward the other ones that I already mentioned is to try um, to improve. I mean, it's interesting whether he is it worse to um, exchange the queens or not. Does he need to do that? Hikaru? Yeah. Does he want to exchange the queens? Like bishop d4, queen c2? Well, bishop d4, he doesn't want to let uh, Black's knight uh, mm, go to, to, c to c7. To c7 yeah, yeah. And uh, knight to a7 doesn't seem to be working, right? Because of queen takes a4. And knight takes c8, queen d1 check with double attack. Oh, so That's he, an important one, yes. He might need to prepare something. He might to maybe... Well, bishop c2, then bishop a6 is going to uh, be played, right? So what move will improve his position? He, he's thinking about that right now. 
because it seems that every I mean his pieces are almost perfectly placed right the bishop on b6 is not letting black knight to go out together with the knight on b5 the bishop on d3 well is guarding the knight I don't really see um, a better place for this bishop than the d3 square ah he did go knight to a7 so he calculated for a very long time and now we are going to see what he uh, decided to do after queen takes a4 um queen i'm just hoping that this was not missed queen e2 no, 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 is a it was not idea a, no no he he spent three minutes yeah he spent course... a very long time calculating it i just hope that the evaluation bar since it has sunk ah, i'm back not to looking zero. at the evaluation bar yeah. <laughs> i'm, I'm very, trying not I'm to be distracted <laughs> you're doing it well because i'm getting a heart attack since the bar is saying now zero 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 but of course it doesn't explain and now it's jumping back in hikaru's favor you did well not to look at the bar alexandra no, you did well it does look i mean it's very nice move queen to e2 uh threatening well protecting the d1 square Threatening to take the bishop, and now look, the queen is mm, the uh, black. I mean, bishop b7 seems to be like the only move. And after bishop b5, the queen will need to go to e7, and then queen to h7 probably. We'll just wow. get to this h7 square where I was Finally. dreaming and saying about it, and the black king is suddenly trapped, and the queen. Uh, from e7 cannot go to g5 because of queen h4 check queen h8 check and queen takes e8 yeah how is queen h7 not just completely game over f6 <laughs> probably f6 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 mm -hmm. you grandmasters are very good at like defense a very see i would go queen h7 and think okay i win well i and would then... also go to <laughs> h7 and then let my opponent decide on whatever he... but six is... we need to uh, prepare for our opponent's move right we need to foresee and tackle. It's, it's very important ability to um, that chess teaches us to think what is going to happen after our uh, moves and our actions by the way, what about like knight c8, bishop c8, yes, queen yes, c8? Yes, that's what right? I'm thinking about. I like it. Actually, it's the same kind of pin that uh, Hikaru just had in his game against Blue Bound. Very similar. It's very mm -hmm. like unpleasant pin, but f6 I still, I think. Um... In both cases, f6 will be the defensive move. It's It looks very nice for Hikaru's position. And, yes, it does. And then this pawn sacrifice with the idea of queen e2 seems to be brilliant i'm i'm glad that he also didn't see the bar because the bar maybe there was like a an only move that would have held the position because for that one brief moment it was it was all right for black but i guess it was an only move and definitely not queen d7 yes that's exactly right uh, i guess from a practical standpoint hikaru just relied on intuition computer mm -hmm. was probably showing some Ridiculous defense. We also have to keep in mind that the chess.com computer can sometimes play a few moves and then go, oh, oops. Yeah, I'm wrong. wrong. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but this is. Well, we shall not forget. I mean, nowadays it's very easy to forget that uh, chess, uh, when played with two grandmasters and not two computers, is still a human game, right? It's, it's normal to make mistakes. It's the mistakes is a huge part of the game and. Um, sometimes, um, even when you're playing, uh, like, incorrectly, mathematically, let's say, but it just puts extra pressure on your opponent, uh, he needs to solve a more difficult, uh, um, he, he needs to, uh, answer more difficult questions. Look, queen h8, bishop d3, I like this. So I think checkmate in one, so how many ways yes. are there so, for black to defend? But queen f8... Or, or did he think that he was gonna play f takes e5 here? <laughs> and then, no, 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 but queen e, f8, does it uh, change uh, a lot, the position? Well, queen h7, I can go... Oh, you're just gonna, you're gonna... Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. f takes uh, e5, bishop g6, so the attack goes on. I'm not sure how how dangerous this attack is, but it... Wow. 
Wow. Let's see. Okay, it's... what's the follow up? Hikaru went for this, and uh, we we are thinking whether it's Bishop G6, Queen H7. But those are the main options here for for White. Well, White doesn't have a lot of choice, right? Yeah. Maybe Hikaru thought Queen H7, F E5, and then Bishop D8. Maybe that's what he wanted. Hmm. Nice. Again, threatening a checkmate on G6. Mm -hmm. I like it. Is it. Oh, it's so hard to visualize. Bish um, bishop e7. Oh no. <laughs> bishop g6, king f6. And yes. Uh, it's going to be a very, very tense situation. Wow, he's gone back to h7. I mean, bishop g6 he had, but yeah, he goes back. Now apparently f takes e5. Well, black is going to take on e5 because uh, it's like the... <laughs> the only move situation for black it doesn't have a lot of other moves unless he sees that he is uh, getting checkmated after f takes e5 wow it's complex it's so tense this position and again as you said it doesn't really matter what the computer thinks because this well i mean a draw position... is still possible look yeah f exactly. takes e5 Bishop d8, bishop e7, ah, bishop e7, then queen g6, and queen takes e6, and queen takes e7. Here we go. Oh. Yeah, f takes e5, bishop d8, bishop e7 is losing. So then how do you... is it e4? Maybe, but well, then f takes e4. I know. And... <laughs> then then yeah, I, I at didn't... Least... I... No, and we shall not forget about queen g6, queen e6 as well, after e4. Oh yeah, I mean uh, this. Uh, uh. Maybe. <laughs> yeah, it makes perfect sense that Hikaru has gone for this because it looks like a crushing win. It looks like there's no defense. Everything is falling apart in one or one of these lines, and at the same time the computer is just like chill. There's no checkmate. He's saying it's zero zero zero. <laughs> oh, even more. It's saying that black is better, and that's the thing. How like, how much better? Um. Minus 1.75, but this is this is not a very deep evaluation of Stockfish. Yes, yes. Well, and I'm... it could be checkmate in two moves. Like that's that's how difficult it is for a human to come up with the best moves here. Black is about to get checkmated. Yeah. And after F takes E5, there is another idea actually, uh, which is G5 to create oh, a fast H6. H pawn. Yeah. <sighs> okay. So um... there are many many ideas. And the position is very complicated and it's very unpleasant to play it with black because you're under constant attack you need to look for this checkmate threats all the time and time is slipping away okay white hikaru uh, has four minutes right so versus six uh, but it's black to move it's black to move and he's hesitating mm. I, I, i'm still trying to figure out what I'm is black gonna play king after? Seven. Uh, no, oh. no, I just mean like f takes e5, bishop d8. What does black even play? It has to be e4. Doesn't everything else lose? <laughs> he did so he take took. on e5. Mm -hmm. I mean, are we are we blind? Like no, I mean after bishop d8, e4. That maybe it's not that clear. Okay, e4. Yes, you have queen g6, queen e6, but then queen f7 will just cover. And uh, we sacrificed, why well, sacrifice two pawns? Yeah. Two pawns now, down two yeah. pawns. So, and the knight is on a7, it's very, oh. I mean, misplaced. So after e4, probably it's um, better it's, to take on e4 first. It's, it's all happening. So here it apparently... Is on the board. So apparently here, oh, so this is losing after queen d6. So this is what I was trying to figure out in my head, the, the computer saying this position is apparently the only move Queen d6. Oh, but then e5! Yes. Queen takes d8. Oh my, what is going on? What is going on? This is insane. Bishop g6, king e7, queen g8, probably. It's just a piece down. Yeah. Oh no. Queen f7, checkmate is threatening there. Also, this knight on a7 is suddenly not leaving such a good impression. So. No, no, no. Not anymore. Yeah. Also, there is still queen d6, g5, by the way, yes. apparently, and mm -hmm. g6 and queen h8 is made, so... What there are many ideas. Very complicated position. Okay, now on a... on... on it's gone beyond depth 30, guys, it's z minus 0 0.5. <laughs> so, 
the no, evil I would say, but, yeah, you know. I would, uh, you, you should not rely on the computer's evaluation until, like, um, death 33 or 34, at least. I mean, D6 is on the board, so the question is, is Hikaru going for the G5 push? I think that's uh, a very good insight, by the way, to chat, because sometimes we are calculating positions in these uh, in these streams, and it's like, especially in the end game, the computer needs time to reset its depth. End game, yeah, you don't you don't watch computer evaluations at all. Yeah, you just. Can... <laughs> it, yeah. So now there's e5 and g5. Uh, originally, no, it's just insane. So one of these two moves, maybe. e5, e5 is a very interesting yeah, g5, continuation. queen takes. e5, queen d8, like, is uh, forced. Then bishop g6 check, king e7, queen g8. And I'm threatening to give a checkmate on f7. The queen goes to d7. And I don't see how white continues, actually. They're a piece down, so we... We uh, attacked brilliantly, but we, if we are left um, with no pieces uh, to continue this brilliancy, then it might be a problem. So e5... Two and a half minutes left to figure out whether it's e5 or g5. Any other options here, or are those two pawn pushes, um, Alexander, the ones that you would consider here? Well, I don't think uh, white has time to retreat the bishop, the black, uh, I mean the d8 bishop somewhere. So yeah, you need to, uh, you might include queen g6 mm -hmm. check, forcing the king go to f8. Um, but then, yeah, but then it's not clear why did you include this check. Tense moment and two minutes left for Hikaru to take yeah, a decision. Two minutes. two minutes. My uh He did retreat the bishop. Okay, he wow. decided just to oh. Well that's that means that um he didn't see uh, any ideas after E5 or G5. And um that's not really a good sign. So D E4, Bishop E4. Or is he gonna, he's gonna no, play, he, he, he didn't take on e4. Yeah, he played bishop to c2. Bishop c2, okay. Because bishop e4 is on queen d1 and uh, doesn't look well for white. I mean, this position is two pawns down, right? But um, if only the knight. Yeah, the issue f seems to be yeah, that a7, a7 knight doesn't have a way back and even moves like. If black is not getting mated, then queen a6 would be just very unpleasant attacking that piece. Yeah. But you should always keep this option of g5 in mind, but queen b6 actually does seem to be very unpleasant. Because uh, black is starting to suddenly look at the white king as well. Queen g1, bishop d5. I mean, black can also attack. Queen b6, uh, queen g1 with bishop d5, it's... Queen to a6, well, same idea as queen f1, bishop d5, together with queen takes a7. Where did all, where, I mean, it did look so powerful, the attack did look so powerful for white. Why, why it didn't work out? It felt like he was this close to giving checkmate that King seemed like it had to be getting checkmated and yet there was always one way in which Black could defend and now it feels like there's no more power to the attack. I guess he still needs to try to go for it with G5. Is there any other move that can come to mind here? Bishop F2 cannot be the case. Queen F1 will pick up the bishop. And I mean, I'm guessing we are getting checkmated too. There are all sorts of issues with Queen A6 attacking the knight and Queen F1 coming too. Yeah, wow. Um, mm -hmm. That is that wild. Is sad. But yeah, and on the other board, Yuri is is working on on Duda. He's <laughs> he's uh, he was working on Duda. He's slightly better, but Duda would 
I mean, we start looking around at the other boards and you start looking around and... Um, and White was winning here. I mean, in Hikaru's game. Oh, that's that. Because that is, I that's tur true. turn on the <laughs> computer simulation now just to check where, when was the moment uh, it all started to go wrong. And actually, remember about uh, I think, uh, um, well, the idea of playing knight to c8. It seems to be winning mm. completely. Yeah, nice like uh, black is totally in Tuxwank after that. That was the spin. But after queen to h7, f6, it was also winning, but uh, white needed to um, to secure the center first, to play f4 at some point. Or maybe start with bishop d3. That was the wrong move order. Bishop, oh. uh, queen h8 and bishop d3. If he'd start with bishop d3, uh... he would win the game. Oh! Yes, because he missed this queen to d8 move. No, queen to f8, I'm sorry. Yeah, that made such a difference that the queen had a square yes, on Yes, the f8. move order. I mean, he... He, he played queen right h8 idea, with 5 seconds. Order. Yes. And this yeah. move order oh. was... Bishop d3, queen h8, bishop g6 was winning. And queen h8, uh, king to f7, bishop d3 was just enough to make a draw. And, uh, well, the draw was still possible after after g5, yeah. Oh, no. Um, yeah. Well, Sam, Sam takes on a7. He's a piece up. Uh, and now... I mean, basically, you have to just, like, go for h6 or something, but then queen g1... Isn't queen... It's queen g1 is... Must be it must be it because then you there's no bishop c1 queen takes queen mm -hmm. king a2 bishop d5 b3 and then something is coming after b3 right yeah. probably oh. bishop to c3 and checkmate on a1 is yeah you yeah inevitable mm. a pity it's a pity because it was such a great game such a strong attack and it was just spoiled because of this unfortunate move order on 35 and 36 move 35 yeah. and 36 yeah it's uh well we, we we start again like i said we start having to look around nepo dominguez still very much a complicated game i mean you start hoping people people start losing basically or, or not winning mm-hmm Actually, I just blundered a queen when I said bishop to c3 after b3 because of bishop e7. <laughs> bishop e7. <laughs> you need to oh. keep this uh, in Alexandra, mind. Alexandra, I, tr I, I trusted Let's you. Let's hope for that move. Let's <laughs> hope for that move. So there's a way for Shanklin to go wrong. But he didn't, he didn't. He didn't go wrong. Um, yeah. Unfortunately, he was precise. Well, at least for the moment, he's playing very well. And now he can uh, give a check on e1, queen e1 check, king a2, yes. and then bishop c3. But some good news, uh, Nepo has made a very big mistake apparently. Uh, having okay. said that, his game <laughs> is... Uh, so... So basically for the standings, those of you wondering if this means the end of the tournament for Hikaru, not necessarily. Now we need to root for the other players who could catch Hikaru or jump ahead of Hikaru. We need those players to lose. Unfortunately for Alexandra, they are the Russian grandmasters in the field. Both Dubov and Nepomnyshi could have more points than Hikaru or the same amount of points if they draw. Well, Dubov is making a draw. It's, uh, he's not going to win. Yeah. And Dubov actually beats Hikaru on tie breaks. Oh, does he? Yeah, because I th I, I think so. Because Dubov has four wins and Hikaru has three, I think. I'm pretty sure last time I checked. So actually, it's the worst case scenario because Hikaru's won three games and I think Duda and Dubov have both won four. But whoa, 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 wait a second. If it's the three of them that tie, then the direct encounter matters, so we're gonna see how many points they scored in within that group of That's the true. players who tied, not the number of wins. That's true. Oh, and Duda actually beat Dubov. 
last round due to beat Dubov. So actually, Dubov would be knocked out because if Hikaru had a draw and Dubov only scored half and Duda scored one and a half, Duda wins on tiebreak, Hikaru is second. So, okay. There's still hope. Okay, there's still hope. Yes, there is still hope. There is still hope. Well, there is still hope. It's quite unfortunate, right, after such a position. But look, look. Hikaru is still playing. He's suffering, of course. He's a piece down, but it's not 100% over yet. 99, I would say. Yeah, it's... um. Wow. How different it, it can be. Literally, you change the move order. But it's, it's a common tactical theme. It's like you can go one yeah. way, then the next, and then... Yeah, you need to choose in between those two, and in this particular position, it was very important to start uh, with Bishop d3 first. When we say a threat is uh, sometimes more dangerous than an execution, right? Absolutely. So there's... Um... Which games are still going on? We still have this game... Uh, on our big screen to piece up uh, and then the Nepo game is back in the balance by the way that game is also not over well Dubov Grishuk is a draw um, oh Nepomish has just made a mistake as soon as we said that well, it's back to balance but Domingos has no I mean, time yeah it's 18 seconds and 35 seconds I mean basically at this point you have to cheer for Lenier to yeah this one is over Hikaru has resigned he played Bishop b3 resigned the game um, wow. Massive, uh, I mean, yeah, just a, a, a massive slip there with the, with the move order and Shanklin defense. He's, he wins the game and, uh, all eyes basically on the other boards. I mean, what, what, what can we say? It's exactly what's happening. We need to root for a favorable result on those boards. Uh, Alexander, you know well how it feels when it's not in your control, but uh, the result will depend on other players. Yes, sometimes it works out well. Let's let's check in with those games. So the two results that matter, the game of Daniel Dubov and the game of Jan Nepomyashi, they are the players that could catch Hikaru either to tie with the same amount of points or if one of them wins, then they will have more points than Hikaru. If either of them wins, then Hikaru is out. If what? they draw... What happened well, to our cameras? <laughs> oh, I thought I thought it's my meds because my meds could easily be wrong. <laughs> no, 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 no. I, I just... Oh, for, our oh, cameras no, switched. Sorry. My camera froze, so I had to turn it off for a moment, but now I'm and now I'm in the middle. I'm the guest now. Yeah, right. I was everybody was saying something went wrong. Okay. So Apologies, that was me with the frozen camera. Um, <clears throat> wow. But that's... yeah, Dubov is um, will it will make a draw and Duda is suffering for a draw. I mean he's trying very hard. He has good chances. He might, he might, um, he might save this game. And do this tie break, wasn't it better? Uh, I guess it also depends on which other players yeah, that tie for the same spot for the direct encounter. So yeah, that game matters too, you are right, whether Duda is in the same, um, same points or not, if he will have more points than Hikaru. Wow. Um... Well, let's wait and see, right? There is nothing else that we can do right now. Yeah, a niche. So Duda has 7.5, right? Uh, yes. He is very close to, make, uh, to making a draw, I would say. Duda seems to be qualifying. So with ha if he makes a draw, then he's certainly in. Um, the yeah. question for Duba and Nepomyashi. So Dubov and Nepomyashi mm, yeah. uh, are on seven points. If they make a draw, they catch Hikaru. If one of them wins, they jump ahead of Hikaru. And that's that's an issue. But even with the tie breaks, it depends on uh, which players exactly are tied. Yeah, it's not good. If Dubov... Uh, if Dubov 
draws his game and uh, Dudo yeah, draws Dubov's, his game. I mean, then... it's already a draw. I mean, Dubov can only win, <laughs> but uh, it's a draw, yeah. theoretically a draw. Yeah. If, if, if he ties with Hikaru, he wins the tiebreak because he's won four games and Hikaru's won three. So Dubov is the worst player you could go head to head in a tiebreak with because um, he wins a lot. He might lose some games, but he wins a lot of games too. And uh, it's a very strange. I, I always uh, found it quite strange to I mean if you say that the tiebreak if you if you'd won uh, more games it also means you lost more I know I know and yeah it's... it seems to be a little bit unlogical to me why um, is a player punished by losing less games that's fair I mean, for me, it was always good because <laughs> usually I lose more, I win more. That's my style. But uh, but logically, still, I cannot really understand. Okay, uh, I understand the logic that it's more uh, entertaining for spectators to see more wins and losses. But still, why why to punish a player from Rook F two Queen H two checkmate is coming in Jan's game. Jan Jan lost. Mm, wow. So, at Jan. least that's that, that's in Hikaru's favor that Jan cannot catch Jan no, cannot catch Hikaru. He cannot. But the problem is that if, as far as I can see, uh, if Duda makes a draw, then Hikaru is sharing is going to share the eighth place with Daniel Dubov, and um, who is still trying to win actually. He... <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> so he's got to have fun up in the rookie game, but it, it should not be possible to win. So no, what's the tie breaks there? If if that's the scenario that, that Duda will have more points, so the tie will be between Hikaru and Dubov. Then then what's Dubov, the story then, there, Levi? Then, then Dubov is, is making it and Hikaru is in ninth place. No. Yep. Because is it Dub certain? Yeah, I, I mean, I'm I'm pretty certain. Um, mm -hmm. Point think... score, direct encounter. Uh, they they made the draw between uh, each other. Dubov and Nakamura. Dub yeah, 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 yeah. When they played each other, I think yes. Yes, yes. they drew. Mm -hmm. Yes, they drew. Yeah, and then it's a number of wins. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, if that's the second yeah, tiebreak, then it's four three. Yeah. 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 Then Anish basically has to beat Duda, but uh, I uh, well, first of all, isn't there just knight d4 now in this game? Mm -hmm. Knight d4. Oh, well, there's king g3. I well, guess. at least yeah, it's going to be a draw. Wow, 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 wow. That's painful. That is very painful. Queen f8, and then not even queen f8 actually. E even afterward, it was very complicated, and there was um. Yeah, g5 and uh... Well, after bishop d3, instead of queen h8, I mean, it would be just simply winning in Hikaru's game. But afterwards, it just got a little bit more complicated, right? And more difficult decisions needed to be taken. So Duda's game is officially a draw, yeah. meaning mm -hmm. that the only player that will tie with Hikaru seems to be... Dubov and that game is officially a draw as well. This yeah. is what we were afraid of. This is exactly what is not in favor of Hikaru. We're gonna double check it just in case yeah. we mis made a mistake. Hopefully we made a mistake and hopefully Hikaru is not eliminated. No, but I think it's uh, it's definitely uh, it it's it, it looks like the reality of the situation. Dubov was literally the worst player, and actually Duda as well has had four wins. Like he yeah. had four wins. He was he had a very decisive tournament. A lot of wins, a lot of losses. Um, so one one win. That's that's what it comes down to. Uh, frankly, half a point in this last round. Yeah. You know. It... And if only the direct encounter would have been in Hikaru's favor, but he made a draw with both Duda and Dubov, so that wasn't gonna help. But Unless Duda's it has Duda is yeah, not yeah, Duda is not tied anymore. I was just saying that even before we knew that uh, if it was a group of more players tied, he drew with all of those players. Oh man. 
This isn't well, how we wanted to end the day. This this was the day Hikaru broke his viewership record. I know. So of... many of you tuned in. He won that clutch game in the previous round. He was winning this game. The, the, I think the most painful part of it is that yeah. he was winning. And as you yep. pointed out, Alexandra, he just he just changed up the move order. So if if he had played Bishop D3 first, if we bring back that position, the same checkmate pattern would have worked. This yes. is how difficult chess can be and how unforgiving a mixed up move order can be too. It wasn't a blunder, but it, eventually the checkmate wasn't working out. This whole attack wasn't working with the move order that Hikaru went for. Well, after Queen H8, apparently King F7, the position is still much, much better, probably close to winning for white. But in that case, bishop d3 is not that strong because of queen f8, and instead f4 should have been played. Yeah, f4, uh, as you said, holding it together in the center. Yeah, protecting the e5 pawn and leaving the knight on e8 standing there. And then bishop d3 uh, might be uh, very strong. And after queen f8, queen h7, uh, bishop d8, e4, after, yeah, the crucial mistake came on move 40. Um, yeah, Hikaru. Bishop h4, yeah. Yeah, g5, you had to just basically go all in, but... Hikaru needed easy to, to sacrifice a piece, yeah, somehow. e5 or g5, uh, and to get some counter chances. But it's not that easy to... Um, um, understand that well <clears throat> yeah. on a more positive note uh alexandra everybody seemed to absolutely love you joining us and the tournament still has six more days so we might have to invite you a couple more times if you don't mind so we will i don't mind i'm i'm sad that i brought some bad luck to hikaru no or it's... not not being able to qualify because he was playing this game so well and reached a winning position but uh, this last it slipped away and yeah sometimes you know sometimes it's easier to win from a losing position <laughs> than from an equal one that's true that's uh, I mean you're just doing what you can I mean and um, hoping since your opponent sometimes attacks, they require material sacrifices. Mm -hmm. And when you sacrifice material, even when you understand that the position is winning, some precision is required. And when, since it's a rapid game, it's not enough time. So you, you tend to make mistakes. Well, let's put it this way. That didn't, that didn't quite work out in our match uh, or in uh, your match against my, my good friend, Alex. It seemed like when we had bad positions, we were not winning them. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, in this case, you're, it's very true, very true.